and welcome to Layout Features with the Practice Managers Association. In this lecture, you will learn how to identify the layout features from source documents in order to answer exam questions. So we're going to go through the different types of layout feature that you might come across in different source documents. If you haven't watched any of the other lectures, the source documents are the three documents that you will get when you do a reading paper. They will always be different, but in these ones I'll show you some examples and uh, work through some exam questions so you can get the idea of what we're going to do or what you'll have to do in the exam. So let's first look at the different type of um, layout feature you could find. So we're going to look at the description, the layout feature itself and the effect it has. So the description, the headline, it comes right at the top of an article or at the top of a web page or more or less anything you're reading um, except for an email and a letter. However, Certain layout features in a letter or an email uh, can still apply. Okay, the headline is used to draw the reader's eye to what an article is about. So this is the kind of description you might have to give when pointing out the layout feature. The second layout feature is bullet points. Okay, they are obviously bold dots on the page intended, uh, indented from the margin and they summarise main points being made, often in instructions. Next we have paragraphs. So we should know what a paragraph is, but it's... Um, it separates different blocks of text that cover different topics. It usually contains a topic sentence and evidence sentences. And, it, um, and the reason people use paragraphs, or the reason we use paragraphs in general, is to break up text into readable blocks that cover different points and topics. Okay, so it makes it easier for the reader to read. The next is imagery, so a photo or a drawing or a cartoon, and it's used to help the reader picture and quickly identify what a text is about. Now, an imperative verb, a little bit different and something that you might not think is a layout feature, it could also be used as a language technique, which we looked at in the previous lecture. So if you haven't watched that one, please go back to it. And an imperative verb is used to instruct or give an order that may either must or must not be followed. Okay, it's a command and that you're using it within your answers um, to show that it's used at the beginning of, beginning of a sentence to instruct or to order something. Okay, the next layout feature is, a, is bold text. You'll notice that most of these layout features are things that you can see when you look at something straight away, other than the imperative verb, unless it's in massive bold text. So in the bold text is made darker and thicker, so you can see it clearly, and it attracts the eye to the important points or phrases by making parts of the text stand out from the rest. The next one is subheadings. Subheadings are often bold or could even be bold and in italics or either or and it's used to indicate what each section of a text is about and it can, it can be found under a headline. The reason we use subheadings is to help the reader understand what the next section of the text is about. And finally we have columns. Columns are blocks of text that is less than the width of the page. It's often used next to another block of text so it goes down in columns just like we've been going down here and it's to help the reader read quickly by making the body of text narrower. Okay, so we're going to look at a question now from the exam paper. It's a four mark question and it says, describe how the author uses four different layout features to enhance communication. Okay, now the text that we're going to look at is this one by Gadget Man, which is a web page. And we're just going to go through and see, as, see if we can find as many layout features as possible. Now, again, I've attached this to the lecture so you can download these source documents along with the actual exam paper that I'm using the questions from. So if you haven't done that already, you can pause the video, download the information and have a go at the question first if you want. So if you are going to pause it and do that, please do so now. Okay, so if you've had a go, and I'm just going to go through them. If you haven't had a go, that's fine. We're just here to learn anyway, and I'm sure you'll get a chance to have a go later. So the first one I want to point out is the headline or the title, Gadget Man. Immediately we know it's going to be something to do with gadgets um, and the fact that we've got some kind of things down here, Blueberry, Galactica 1, TZ2, Zony 9, Zony 9 Plus, you know they're kind of like their phones and we know that as well by the mobiles tab that's clicked here. But anyway, we'll come back to that. So we've got heading, Gadget Man. Next we have the subheadings. We have one here, one here, one here and one here, which is lovely. So already we have two, two layout features. We then have our side column here, which allows people to click the links or to see what else there is to look at or read about. Um, we then have paragraphs, okay, here. Obviously, we know these are also paragraphs, but they have subheadings, whereas these two don't, so I thought I would highlight that as the paragraphs. 
and we have links here for people to click about other reviews. Finally, we have another bar here, which is the Facebook, Twitter and YouTube links. So people know that it's on a website as well. We also know it's a website because we can see the bar here. I think that's as many as I could find, yes. So take those all in, okay? Um, see, we've picked out loads, which is great. The more you pick out, the better. And um, although I do know that if you're doing this exam online, it may be hard to underline things and um, you know write on things. Uh, but just try and write them down on note, as, as notes as you go through just to help you if you if you so you don't miss anything out. So let's look at the question again. Describe how the author uses four different layout features to enhance communication. So the first one I've put is bold heading. So the reader has an idea of what they might read about. Okay, you've said what it is and you've explained it. And it says describe how the author uses four layout features. So we've said what it is and we've described why. We've then said subheadings makes it easy for the reader to navigate through the article, okay? Or it tells you exactly what each paragraph is going to be about. Paragraphs make it easy to read, so you're putting it into chunks so that the reader can go through the article nice and easily without having a massive chunk of text to read. And finally, a sidebar, so the reader can click on other links, okay? All right, so it's really nice and useful um, to identify those different layout features early on because it's a really nice easy question for four marks okay well done please have a go at the task uh, added on to the lecture and um, if you have any problems feel free to comment on the lecture or send me an email at sadie at practice okay thank you very much well done and thank you from pma